Hello everybody. Uh, now I'll discuss um, about the uh, remaining part of the welding process, which is the very basics associated to the welding process to understand the overall view uh, the associated with the the welding process. So we we know there is a in welding process there is a sealing gas is usually used in the welding process, but the role of the sealing gas is actually to protect the molten material from the outside atmosphere because you know at a high temperature there is a chance probability of the formation of the defects is much more that means more reaction with the outside atmosphere is possible at the high temperature. So, just to protect from the outside atmosphere uh, we use the any kind of the sealing gas in a welding process this is very common. Now, the sealing gas can be utilized in the two different ways one is the directly you can use the sealing gas uh, in the form of a gas we usually use the uh, different types of the sealing gas or we can use some kind of the uh, slag. Uh, we can use the slag coverage by the chemical reaction in the art. So, we can use any kind of the flux which is cover and uh, during the reaction it converted to the slag formation and that slag actually protect the molten material from the uh, surrounding atmosphere. So, these two different ways we can introduce the we can create some kind of the sealing to the molten material because this molten material as the uh, readily react with the outside atmosphere and, and then it creates different compounds and that can be treated as a formation of the defect associated the mainly the oxides uh, the oxide usually forms and that can be treated as a defect associated with the oiling process. So, now so therefore it is very common to utilize the any kind of the sealing of the molten pool during the oiling process. Now common sealing gases we can directly use the argon helium because this is the inner type of the gases and that will the protect uh, the molten material and that at the high temperature also it become non reactive. So, that is how you can use the argon helium and the, as the most uh, common sealing gas associated with the arc welding process. Now, apart from this thing sometimes we can use the carbon dioxide and oxygen and uh, because oxygen is here not just to produce the, uh, the oxides, but rather we can use the oxygen and carbon dioxide is a small quantity or small percentage just to protect the molten material or in some cases this kind of the sealing gas also helps to stabilization of the arc. So, that is why we use sometimes we use the any kind of the main the argon and helium as a uh, the main sealing gas we can use certain uh, percentage of the carbon dioxide or certain percentage of the oxygen very small percent of the oxygen associated with the sealing gas. So, here the mix together in the different combination and and probably the sealing is the primary of uh, primary work associated sealing gas, but is the secondary work to stabilize the the arc also during the arc welding process. So, that is the secondary work associated with the sealing gas. So, therefore, we know but before choosing any kind of the sealing gas associated with the welding process we need to cover up this properties one is the where the reactivity ionization potential and the thermal conductivity uh, of this uh, sealing gas and just looking into all, all these properties of this thing then we can choose the one particular sealing gas associated with the oiling process. Now, we look into another things that is the enthalpy of melting because we are talking about the fusion oiling process, but what is the amount of the energy is actually utilized to melt the substance material we can simply calculate this amount of the energy heat energy is basically utilized to, the, uh, to melt the substance material. So, that is the call is the enthalpy of the melting. So, we can say that Q the total amount of the heat energy is required to melt the given volume of the oil material and that is equivalent to the there is a given volume of the oil material just to melt it, but here you can see there are two different components one is the, the heat required to melt the solid. So, when you melt the solid it means the solid, but at the melting point temperature and there is another is the latent heat just to change the phase from solid phase to liquid phase. So, both heat will be counted here in this case. So, one is the heat required to melt the solid another is the latent heat of fusion just to change the phase for the same temperature from solid to the liquid phase. Now, in that cases we can estimate the total uh, heat is equal to Q equal to if you see rho Cp density specific heat and Tm is the melting point temperature of this particular material and T0 is the initial temperature or ambient temperature. So, this is the uh, amount of the heat is required just to raise the melting point temperature solid and this L is the latent is which is required to change the phase from solid phase to liquid phase. So, both counting 
base total indicates the total amount of the heat energy is to melt the substance material which is called the enthalpy of melting. Now, if you see you want typical uh, well pool shape the, this one in inside part is the molten zone that is called the fusion zone and you, next part will be the heat affected zone and next part which is unaffected base metal. Base metal is not affected by the temperature. So, there is no change of the any morphological and any there is no phase change occurs in the base material. So, that is why this is the by with the uh, affected by the temperature. So, therefore, base material is no change in the material, but here heat affected zone is the by the change of the temperature with that zone is basically heat affected zone. So, these are the three different zones fusion zone, heat affected zone and the base unaffected base material as the three different zone associated with the any kind of the melting uh, fusion zone. But we are calculating what is the amount of the energy here just to uh, melt of the substrate material. But of course, in this case during the oiling process we are not counting what are the loss and all these things. Is there in the help of melting just to change the, the particular volume of the material to just to melt it. So, by considering the raise the temperature up to the melting point and plus change of the phase what is the amount of the heat required we are calculating both these two and this is called the enthalpy of melting process. Now talking about the uh, friction welding if you remember we are talking about the different solid state welding process but one of the solid state welding process is the friction welding process. So friction welding process there are five different types of the friction welding process one is the linear rotary st friction stair welding process radial and orbital uh, welding process but of course these are the different techniques we are not discussing here. So, we will try to discuss later on the this these three types of the oiling process linear rotary and the stair oiling process. So, in this case the type of the friction is the basic relative type of the motion uh, is distinguished what is the linear friction is creating with the rotary friction or along with the friction the steering of the material is also there. So, that is what is called the frictional uh, this thing this is linear friction welding, rotary friction welding and the friction stair welding process the three different types of the friction welding process are there. So, in case of the in this case friction welding with the so at the high rotational speed can be created in case of the rotational friction welding process and along with the the because high rotational speed will be there. So, that is responsible for the generation of the heat, but with the application of the pressure then compressive force is usually applied to the rock piece. So, that is the make then solid bonding between the two component the coalescence between the uh, two component at this generated heat with the application of generated heat. It basically displays the plasticized deformation is there associated with this thing and the faint surface plastic deformation is there and their bonding clamping between the uh, together. So, usually linear rotary and friction sterling process in this case one piece is usually stationary while others are basically moving. So, they see one stationary and other components are usually moves with respect to uh, stationary uh, components then it will be easy to maintain uh, this uh, frictional heat generation because if both are moving in these cases it is very difficult to maintain the rigidity of the system. So, in that cases only we keep one fix another is usually moves in case of the friction welding process. Uh, here also you can see the friction stair welding process. So, here you see there is a tool is there insert a, inside the friction stair welding tool and this tool pin is inserted to the at the interface and it is high rotational speed is there and that this tool shoulder is basically in contact with the surface. So, here all the contact surface is responsible for the generation of the heat through the action of the friction. So, but at the same time since it is uh, rotating and as a, the, is the along the welding direction it moves, but that moving speed is very low in this case. So, the in this case uh, these two components are joined and plasticized is there. So, basically friction is also there and the steering action is also there associated with this uh, process that is why it is called the friction stair welding process. We will discuss more detail about the friction welding process later on. Now, we can see the diffusion bonding process also this is another kind of the solid state welding process, but here we can see the two work pieces are held together and there is some uh, resistance heating at the interface and with the application of the pressure, but but there is no relative motions between the two work piece. So, here just simply ap apply of the force and the heat generation and the interface just to facilitate the diffusion between these two bit metals between A and B. So, here definitely it is very important that that how we can prepare the interface what are the whether there is intimate contact between the piece is there or not. So, very good intimate contact between the interface without any 
kind of the contamination or any kind of the oxide layers at the interface which helps to facilitate the bonding between this uh, component A and B through the diffusion of the atoms between these uh, two components. So, this is usually known as the uh, diffusion welding process. This process involve macroscopic deformation, small dif macroscopic deformation or relative uh, does not involve any kind of the macroscopic deformation or any kind of the relative motion of the workpiece. But sometimes solid filler metal can also be may or may not also use depending upon the uh, diffusivity uh, between the two component is there. If there is a diffusivity is very low between these two component then we can sometimes we can use the third material at the interface and we choose the third material in such a, in such a way that the along with the third material the diffusive diffusion is more readily occurs with, with uh, both the material A and material B in that particular case. So, this is the typical understanding basic understanding of the diffusion bonding uh, process. There is another transition welding process we already discussed the transition welding process which is bridging and soldering under this category transition welding process. Here we can see the metallic components are joined together through fusion by applying the heat pressure and or path at the in this cases we try to use the bridging and soldering process because uh, in bridging and soldering process here the molten metal is poor here but it is at the interface and this molten metal when solidified then it try to bond between these two components. But it is not melting the parent metal. But in case of fusion welding process the parent metal also melting. So, here is the difference between the welding and bridging process. Now, if you look into this soldering and bridging process because the, both are transition welding process both are princ principally both are same but there is only difference based on this thing the material and because in soldering process metals are bonded together using a non-ferrous filler metal different non we can use the this filler metal a non-ferrous and melting temperature should be lower than 450 degree centigrade. So, for that we can say this is a soldering process and bridging process the filler metal melting point is greater than 450 degree centigrade that is process the uh, bridging process. So, choice of the molten this uh, filler material are different in this case in between the bridging and soldering process, but in principle both are the same uh, follow the uh, similar principle the joining or bonding of the two comp uh, components using the bridging and the soldering process. But it is called transition welding process because it is not the molten metal is the filler metal is melting, but it is not melting the parent materials. Now, try to look into analysis of the heat flow in the welding process just to basic understanding of the heat flow associated to welding process because overall we see the fusion welding process definitely there is the application of the energy, heat energy and that basically the heat energy is generate some kind of the temperature distribution associated with the welding process and this temperature distribution helps to understand different cooling rate and this cooling rate is basically indirectly affect the formation of the microstructure in case of the welding process or cooling rate or temperature gradient also helps to understand the solidification behavior associated to the welding process. So, that is why to some basic understanding of the this uh, temperature distribution or analysis of the heat flow in the welding process is will be helpful. Now, Familiar with this figure, I think uh, because heat source is there, it creates the molten pool, it creates the heat affected zone and solidified component. But if you look in the perspective of the heat transfer, mode of the heat transfer, we can see the heat conduction is usually occurs for the whole domain. In the whole workpiece, the heat transfer, heat conduction will occur. But there is a, the, it creates a small melt pool. Within the small oil pool, there is a convective convection, the metal flow field is, uh, is there. So, within the molten pool the convection usually occurs. So, that means uh, the, the metal is basically flow from one point to the an, an another point with this following certain pattern. So, that is why convection is associated within the molten pool. Now, point is that what we can analyze the heat flow first we try to represent because we, we see that there is a arc welding process, electron beam welding process, laser beam welding process all these three different. There is a the all the heat source is energy, heat source is there, energy is there either arc laser, but representation of the heat source can be different way. So, for example, the representation of the heat source can be mathematically represent in the you can assume it is a point heat source that means one particular point heat is applied because and uh, or we can assume there is a over a line heat source is applied line heat source or sometimes we can use the distributed heat source that is a distributed over an area. So, the representation of the heat source is one aspect 
and the representation of the heat source in some point of cases if you try to look into the point line of distributed heat source the solution of the heat conduction equation will be uh, uh, in character depending upon the type of the heat source uh, represented we can see that uh, the looking into the solution but if you try to look in the very simple solution we have to simplify the type of the heat source for example if it is a distributed heat source it is very difficult to get a uh, analytical solution of the this uh, governing equation that means conduct heat conduction equation now when you representation of the heat source when you try to different way represent the heat source then we try to solve the the possible to solve analytically but following the governing equation the heat conduction equation so which is usually governed by the fourier's law of the heat conduction so in this case if we follow the heat conduction only and neglect the material flow the the from the heat conduction equation we can get the output as a temperature distribution but in this case when you try to get the the analytical solution or as it in the form of a temperature distribution or we can uh, in that cases we carefully have to choose the analytical solution nature of the analytical solution can be different uh, depending upon the whether it is point heat source whether it is line heat source or whether it is a distributed heat source but overall you can see the material flow is also there associated with the in this cases but material flow also influence the fluid flow also influence the energy transport which is usually the, the energy transport equation is there but that from in the energy transport we use the convector term that is comes from the solution of the navier stokes equation so navier stokes equation is the in this case is the total force balance the, or the we just looking into the momentum uh, um, balance based on that we can from the navier stokes equation we can get the solution output in the form of a velocity distribution so that velocity distribution can add one term the convective transport of the heat is basically is required if we look into the energy transport so i mean to say that this equation here only heat conduction equation we can solve it and if we incorporate the navier stokes solution of the navier stokes equation in that cases we can modify the energy transport equation uh, or by incorporating the convective term here in the energy transport equation but that is absent in case of the heat conduction model so when you only considering the heat conduction this energy transport term will be not available in the if you try to solve the only heat conduction equation here is the difference but of course from the heat conduction equation we can get the reasonable result also uh, in the because in the if you try to incorporate the fluid flow analysis the uh, by solving the the navier stokes equation the where the output is the velocity field in that case it is almost impossible to solve the analytically so it is very difficult to get the analytical solution of the this uh, uh, fluid flow phenomena associated with the oiling process so this is the most this solution is the most reasonable and we can explain the different phenomena associated with the uh, oiling process now we see that 3d heat conduction equation here they use this particular heat conduction this is a standard equation we can use the different terminology here the internal heat generation q dot thermal conductivity of the material temperature time density specific heat of the all the material and associated with the property and we get we can get this is the governing equation the heat conduction equation and three dimensional heat conduction equation now we can solve this equation but this equation is basically the this heat conduction equ equation is basically for the whole domain and this is the domain or maybe i can say the 3d heat conduction equation is value over the volume of the component which is looking for the solution of that but from the surface there might be some heat loss so we need to apply some kind of the boundary condition so along with the governing equation we need to apply boundary conditions but boundary condition means in this welding problem the boundary condition is the convective and the radiative heat loss from the surface that is depends in terms of the boundary condition so along with the governing equation if we apply the boundary condition combining these two we can get the complete solution of the equation so here you see that solve the governing equation but governing equation here is the heat conduction equation along with the boundary conditions we can get the solution of this the basic heat conduction equation along with the boundary conditions either numerically or analytically it is possible so but when you try to look into the analytically we need to cater with the or we need to tailor 
the different types of the boundary condition heat source representation such that we can get a some solution of the Gominic equation analytically. Otherwise, if we want to actual representation of the oiling process, if you try to solve this Gominic equation, you need must go for the, the numerical solution of the equation. So, numerical there are numerical techniques, finite element, finite volume method, finite difference methods are also there. We can follow this particular techniques and we can get the solution of the temperature distribution for the domain, which is more realistic. But rough estimates we can get the solution analytically also. But he in this particular case will I will try to explain is the analytical solution of the heat conduction equation associated with the uh, the oiling problem. So, so that it will some basic understanding of the heat transfer phenomenon is possible through the analytical solution of the heat conduction equation in oiling problem. Here I just point out one analytical solution of the temperature distribution associated with the oiling process. So, I already mentioned that if you try to solve the analytically we have to go for so many assumptions and uh, we, uh, such that we will be able to get one solution. So, here we mentioned that that moving point heat source. So, it the we use the point heat source we represent the heat source uh, heat is applied to the is a uh, one particular point and moving heat source on a semi infinite body moving point heat source means first it is moving one particular direction that means we know oiling the certain velocity we incorporate the velocity term also here then on a semi infinite body semi infinite body means maybe one direction we can consider the infinitely long the domain and other two dimensions it's a finite having finite length in other dimension so that's why it is called the semi infinite body now more well known solution of the horizontal 3d equation in the semi infinite workpiece we can we can get the point heat source and the no heat losses this is another assumption we are assuming there is no heat loss from the boundary with this condition we get the temperature distribution is like that t equal to t0 plus q by twice pi kr k is the you know the k is the thermal conductivity um, r is the radial distance and uh, v is the velocity alpha is the uh, thermal diffusivity. So, here alpha equal to k by rho Cp. So, alpha is the thermal diffusivity of the material. So, heat source is actually moving along the velocity v. So, along the velocity uh, x axis with the velocity v. Now, r is the radial distance. So, this is I mean to say that this is one solution of the temperature, but with certain particular assumption. So, I have already mentioned the assumption with this assumption we are get this is the solution of the temperature. But in this solution, we cannot estimate the temperature at the application of the heat source point because the singularity problem at the origin of the coordinate system caused by the point heat source because point heat source assumption is there. So, uh, at the origin uh, we can get the single we will not be able to get the solution by uh, temperature distribution by using this equation. So, that is called the singularity problem associated with the solution. Now, if we assume this is the simple solution of the Rosenthal 3D equation we can get we can reach some some conclusion from this solution. Now, we can estimate cooling rate and temperature gradient because cooling rate and temperature gradient is more relevant to understanding the solidification behavior or the microstructure associated with the oiling process that is why from the temperature distribution or from the temperature distribution as a function of the time we can simply estimate uh, the this cooling rate and or uh, cooling rate and this uh, temperature gradient but in this solution if you see this solution is not associated with the any kind of the time phenomena so basically uh, but it's a basically steady state solution i can say like that because it is not the solution not associated with not is a function of the time component but still we can utilize this uh, solution uh, just to estimate the uh, cooling rate and the temperature gradient from this solution. So, let us see how, how what we can estimate the these two component cooling rate and temperature gradient from the Rosenthal solution. So, this is the temperature distribution equation. Now, we can say that del x by del t small t here uh, this is we know the del x by del t is the velocity components because we know v equal to change of the distance with respect to time that can be represent the velocity v. So, basically uh, this representation of the velocity v. Now, along the x axis. So, along the x axis if you see along the x axis we can say the coordinate of the along the x axis should be y equal to z equal to should be 0. So, when y equal to z equal to 0 if we put it here y equal to 0 and z equal to 0 we can say that that r equal to uh, x. So, along the x I, I think uh, I calculate the, so r equal to uh, square root of 
x square plus y square plus z square. If we put it y equal to z, uh, y equal to 0, z equal to 0 is basically r equal to finally it becomes x. So, that is I have written here. So, if r equal to x, then here if you put r equal to x, so r minus x this should be 0 here. So, e to the power 0 should be 1 and so t equal to t 0 or t minus t is equal to q by twice pi k r. So, t minus t is equal to q by twice pi k r we are getting putting the r equal to x in this equation. Now, temperature gradient, temperature gradient del t by del x along the x axis. So, del t by del x we are calculating the temperature gradient. So, del t by del x if we do del t by del x we do the derivative in this case we are getting the minus q by twice pi k x square here. Now, uh, where twice minus q by twice pi k x square but here we replace the the x here. So, from here we can t minus t equal q by twice pi k from here we can estimate the x equal to uh, twice pi k x equal to q by t minus t 0 and here x equal to twice pi k. So, basically we are from here you can put the values of the x here x here and we reach this expression twice pi k t minus t 0 square by q. Now, we can say that del t by del t del capital T by del small t. So, that is called the uh, I think that is the change of temperature respect to time that means this indicates actually cooling rate. So, cooling rate there del t by del t we can say that del t by del x into del x by del t. So, del t by del x and del x by del t we can further uh, divide these two components, but del t by del x we have already estimated the temperature gradient we have already estimated this one and put this value and del x by del t small t this is the v. So, we put this value we are reaching this expression. Now, we can uh, reach certain conclusion with this expression the cooling rate and here you can see that we can neglect the sign but just focus on the what can be the magnitude all these things. So, cooling rate reduced sig significantly by preheating. By preheating means basically we have the uh, initial temperature are very high. So, initial temperature is very high means not room temperature may be 100 degree or 200 degree centigrade that means we use the more preheating to the substrate. So, T0 is high. So, T minus T0 difference will be reduced when it will be reduced. So, therefore, cooling rate will reduce, but here you just neglect the sign convention only take the magnitude of this thing expression. So, therefore, cooling rate will be reduced significantly by the preheating. Second point is the cooling rate decreases with increasing QIP. So, here you can represent this q by v, just remove v here from here. So, q by v. So, q by v is basically the amount of the heat input per unit length. So, q by v is basically v is the velocity is the when there is a we can characterize the amount of the heat uh, by taking care of the velocity of the oiling process. So, velocity is very high, the amount of the heat is low. In velocity is very low, amount of the heat input will be much more. So, that is represented by the heat input per unit length. So, that is the meaning of the q by v. So, cooling rate decreases because q by v is basically with increasing. So, q by v is increasing. So, basically denominator is increasing. So, total magnitude will be uh, decreasing. So, cooling rate can decrease by increasing the q by v. v. Now, third point temperature gradient decreases with increasing Q. So, temperature gradient uh, we can see the temperature gradient decreases with increasing Q means the here we estimated the temperature gradient. So, temperature gradient so if we with increasing Q if we increasing the Q then temperature gradient will decrease with increasing Q that means more heat input the temperature gradient will decrease. So, I, I mean to say that so we can understand just to estimate the cooling rate and the and the temperature gradient that which parameter has to cater uh, the how physically link with the change of this parameter associated with uh, this thing how we can reduce the cooling rate or how what we can increase the cooling rate or what we can reduce the temperature gradient or we can what we can increase the uh, decrease the temperature gradient just this kind of the information we are getting uh, from this analysis. So, that accordingly we can design the welding process just simply looking into the analytical solution of the temperature distribution of the fusion welding process. Now, there is another aspect we will try to understand what is the heat transfer efficiency associated with the fusion welding process. See in this case it is uh, see the transfer efficiency is that there are two efficiency one is the uh, thermal efficiency uh, another is the melting efficiency. So, thermal efficiency is one melting efficiency is the two in this case. So, for example, the with the heat is uh, net heat is approached. So, 
in a in a welding process we put the electrical circuit and we can in a uh, welding machines we set the voltage and current so that voltage and current is applied to this particular welding process so we can estimate what is the power is the arc power is basically representing in terms of the multiplication of the voltage and current that indicates the arc power so directly but in case of the arc but if in case of the laser welding process we can directly measure the laser power that is in watt so therefore in this case suppose q0 q0 is the arc power because that is a applied voltage and current applied voltage and current but when you apply the arc uh, creating the arc in the workpiece the arc power equal to q0 but when arc is created some heat will be lost due to the convection and radiation before transferring the total amount of the heat to the substrate so heat loss by convection radius from the creation of the arc so here which is amount of the heat is uh, go inside to the substrate material from the arc that is say for example uh, in this case we consider this is a q so that means q0 is the actual arc power which is calculated by the multiplication of the the arc voltage and arc current but this is the supply uh, energy to the creation of the arc but when you creating the arc there is a loss of the heat by convection and radiation from the arc so net amount of the energy transferred to the workpiece by the arc is equal to q so therefore we can say that q is the amount of that energy transferred to the workpiece and but actual supply was the q0 that indicates the the thermal efficiency of the the this uh, arc welding process thermal efficiency now the q is amount of the energy supplied to the workpiece so now it will create some molten zone but at the same time some loss of the heat by convection and radiation uh, from the surface of the workpiece so that loss will be act to be accounted so in that case if we assuming that actually total q1 amount of the energy is basically utilized for the melting of the substrate but actually energy transfer from the arc to the substrate is equal to q q and out of the q some uh, some loss will be there from the boundary and actually q1 amount of the energy utilized for the melting of the substrate material so therefore we can say the melting efficiency is basically the q1 is the actually utilized and what is the amount of the energy q supply to the substrate material from the arc so therefore it indicate this indicates the melting efficiency uh, for this welding process but actually q1 is the total amount of the heat is required just to melt the substrate up to the melting point and including the latent heat of fusion it basically q q1 we can calculate just to melt the substrate and basically melt substrate melt the and change of the phase from solid phase to liquid phase that amount of the heat is counted in q1 but therefore loss or maybe q minus q1 is basically loss it's a it's count to the any kind of the consists of the liquid overheated and the and the part of the conducted in the surrounding that means surrounding and the from the surrounding there is a loss through the convection and radiation to the uh, outside atmosphere so that is the amount of the q minus q1 is the loss to the loss of the heat here now q1 can be calculated like that q1 can we already discuss what is the enthalpy of melting we can calculate so we can calculate the velocity velocity of the welding process a is the cross section area rho is the density and that actually indicates the volume flow rate i think this on the volume flow rate and uh, this is the sp specific heat associated with that and this is the just to reach the melting point temperature and this is the latent heat so total heat counting that calculates the total amount of the heat required to melt the substrate material now this way now melt thermal efficiency and melting efficiency now if we consider the overall process efficiency of this arc welding process we can say the process efficiency q by q0 equal to efficiency that is fine q by q0 equal to this efficiency was basically uh, process efficiency will be the q1 is the okay q1 is the final amount of the heat is required to melt q1 and what is the initial amount of the energy supplied equal to q q0 so q1 by q0 is basically q 1 by q and q by q 0 so q 1 by q um, q 1 by q is the melting efficiency and q by q 0 equal to the thermal efficiency so basically process efficiency is the multiplication of the melting efficiency and thermal efficiency that indicates the total process efficiency associated with this uh, fusion welding process I think that's all for the time being because uh, in, in this case we try to just uh, see different aspect associated with the fusion rolling process I discuss and I hope this will help to understand the overall uh, view of the 
fusion rolling process uh, or not only fusion rolling process uh, to, to explain the other solid state rolling processes also and this will uh, further uh, helps to understand the different types of the welding process we can it will it's a basic understanding of the welding process but in details welding process of the different techniques we'll try to discuss in other module so thank you very much for your kind attention